Few days back, I was just going through the Reddit thread and the title of that particular Reddit thread was like DevOps is not for the beginner. From the title, the thread looks really interesting. So I went ahead and started reading few points about it. And then I realized that the guy who has written this particular Reddit thread is not a beginner. He is a really an experienced guy who is really struggling to find a good DevOps engineer for his company. From the thread, I can easily sense his frustration because he has done quite a lot of interviews for that particular position, but he is still struggling to find a real suitable candidate for that job posting. And interestingly, he has posted his evaluation criteria and questions which he was looking from a potential candidate. When I looked at those questions, which I'm just going to discuss pretty soon, then I realized that an experienced candidate should be able to answer those questions properly. And even if the same set of questions were being asked with a fresh college graduate, then not all of the question, but some of the questions should be answerable from the fresh college graduate as well. So the first question was like how the networking and routing works. So if you have already worked in any cloud services, for example, AWS, Google Cloud or Azure, then you should be able to explain the routing and the networking. And even if you have worked on on-premise data center or on-premise infrastructure, then you should be able to answer those questions. So what the expectation would be if you are trying to explain the networking and routing? So you can easily explain any implementation. For example, if you have, if you have implemented VPC, subnet, uh, private subnet, public subnet, how you have implemented those, how you have created the route tables, how you have set up the routes, how you have created the security groups and even if you have worked in any other cloud for example google cloud then you can easily explain the cloud router the firewalls and the routes how you set up over there so all those sort of routing and networking implementation you can easily explain no one expect you to provide a really straight answer but they are more of a looking for an experience uh, like how you have implemented, what are the challenges you have faced when you are implementing the networking and routing. So instead of providing a bookish uh, explanation, try to provide more concrete example, uh, the problems which you have faced when you are implementing these concepts when we are talking about the networking and routing. The second question was, and it was one of the most basic question is what are ports? So when someone asks like what are ports, then you can easily give some of the very basic example. For example, HTTP port, HTTPS port, SSH port. So these are the quite a few basic ports which everyone uses in a day-to-day -day, uh, development. After explaining the ports, you can also explain like what you can control with these ports. So for example, in the firewall, you can configure the rule based on those ports to allow certain traffic and also uh, disable some of the traffic coming into your application. So those are the few examples which you can easily explain if someone asks what are ports. And also if you have worked with the AWS, then also there is a good application when you are creating the security group based on those ports. So these kind of explanation which you can easily provide, which can easily satisfy an interviewer that you really knows those concepts and you have really worked on those concepts in your past experience. The third question was like, how will you troubleshoot a slow running Linux machine? And to answer that particular question, you just need to provide your approach. How will you troubleshoot a slow running Linux server or a Linux machine? And for that, you can easily give few examples of the command, for example, top, htop, free, vm straight. So these are the few commands which generally use for finding the memory uh, input output usage, disk usage and to figure out like where the consumption is more onto our Linux server. So you can give these few examples of your command so that you can explain like these are the basic troubleshooting command which I would prefer to run when a Linux machine is running slow. And with those command, I should be able to identify which are the crucial problems with my Linux machine and then we can take a subsequent action to troubleshoot those problems.
So these kind of uh, answers which you can uh, present when it, these kind of ask question has been asked for troubleshooting any Linux machine. The fourth question was in the list is what is firewall and what do you mean by the stateless and stateful firewall? So I would expect here to explain what the firewall is, what is the purpose of a firewall, how would you use the firewall to block and allow the traffic which is coming in for accessing your application. And when it comes to stateless and stateful firewall, then you can easily explain those concepts by taking a very basic example. For example, a stateless firewall is just behaves like a gatekeeper who just checks whether I'm going to allow that particular packet or not. It doesn't care much about from where the packet is coming and from where the packet will go. Second, when we talk about the stateful firewall, then it is a really a smart gatekeeper who not only allows and disable that packet coming in through the firewall, but it also checks from where the packet is coming and where the packet is going forward. So those kind of examples which you can easily take while explaining the concept or a question asked around the firewall. The fifth in the list was what are web server. So you can easily explain by taking an example that if someone is trying to access a website and once the user enters that website URL into the browser, then a request is generated. That request is processed uh, by the web server hosting that particular website and the response is thrown back in the form of HTML content. So that's the purpose in a nutshell for a web server. But web server needs to be uh, deployed and keep up and running on a certain port and those ports are protected by certain firewalls and on top of that we have some DNS to manage our domain of our website. So you can explain and link these concepts so that uh, interviewer knows that uh, yeah you really know how the web server works, how you can configure the web server along with the like a firewall rules, security groups, or DNS configuration. We will talk more about the DNS later, but these are the few concepts which you can very, very easily interlink when you are trying to explain the web server. And also you can just give the few examples of a web server, for example, Nginx, uh, Apache Tomcat, WebLogic, JBoss. So those are the very few uh, like a popular web server which are generally used in the market uh, for deploying our applications. The sixth and the last question was in the list was what is DNS and what are the DNS records? To explain the DNS, uh, a simplistic example would be like uh, a DNS is of open phone book where you have a meaningful name. That meaningful name can be your website name, for example, google.com and that google.com translate to a IP address. And this translation of making this meaningful or human readable name, which is google.com to IP address is done by domain name system. To support and provide more credibility to your answer, you can also explain if you have purchased any domain and if you have successfully configured a domain using the A record, CNAME record, or maybe MX record or tax record, then these sort of answer will provide more credibility that you really know the DNS system, how to configure the website and how the DNS works. So I would encourage you to focus on these concept on a more practical way and these are like a very doable you don't need to have a really vast experience to experiment with these concept so this is how i would try to address if someone is going to ask me the question related to the dns area so those were the questions which i found very interesting from that particular reddit thread and from that particular interviewer's experience so I can certainly say that yes, DevOps is not entirely for the beginner, but I cannot deny the fact that even a fresh college graduate can also work on the DevOps because it doesn't require to be a super duper expert to begin with the DevOps. If you know those concepts, if you have worked, if you have done some kind of projects on those uh, concepts, then you can easily work on and then you can easily build up your experience.
because with the experience what you will learn is that you will just practice your troubleshooting skills and that will come with the experience so yeah at certain level that devops is not for a very beginners but there is there are ways that you can still make a way around if you are just getting started with the devops and even if you are a fresh graduates from a college then you can just brush up this concept and then you can just start uh, looking and applying for the devops jobs let me know how was your experience in the devops interviews and if you have also struggled with the similar sort of question then please put down it into the comment section i would happy to read and reply to those and if you are liking this kind of a content then please consider subscribing and following this channel because there is a lot of content on devops which i have already published onto this channel and there are many more uh, which uh, i have planned in upcoming month so see you into the next session till then take care and bye bye